Hey guys, Carnivorous Earth here, and welcome to another vlog. I'm not 100% sure why I'm doing this. Well, no, I do know why I'm doing this. So my brain doesn't ooze out of my ears from doing research and script writing for In the Mind's Madness. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that the last couple days, too much. But I feared... Well, I realized I haven't really introduced myself or anything like that to the channel and haven't really done anything like this except for an apology and to let you guys know hey look the channel's taking a completely different direction so yeah I wanted to kind of just sit down talk about a couple things and do a couple of things um, first off my name is my name not just my username. My name is Scott. Uh, my age, we will not discuss because I'm old. Older than I look. And where I live, eh, I live in Kentucky. That's all you're getting from me. But, yeah, um, the reasons why I wanted to do this channel to begin with. I wanted to start the channel, um, well, I was inspired to start even considering YouTube by Markiplier, part of the reason why I started Let's Plays. But it wasn't like, oh look, he's funny, he's like, like growing very, very fast, I kind of want to do that. It was more of his attitude towards everything, being honest between him and his viewers, and um, wanting to do good things with what he was building, and that's kind of what I want to do. Like I said in the last vlog, there are reasons besides fame and money and why I'm doing this. I would like to be able to do what he does with charity work and stuff like that, even though now most of my content is going to be creepy things. But, anyway, so, there's my little ramble in the very 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 beginning now um, one thing I was gonna go ahead and do and I stumbled across um, actually from uh, another YouTube ch channel the scariest things tag so I thought why the fuck not and I'm trying to do something with the hair besides just chopped off. I'm at the point where I don't know if I want to just grow it out long or if I want to like buzz my head. So I got this little tiny dinky thing but nothing, it all won't fit in there. The most annoying part won't fit in there. So god I'm rambling. Anyway scariest the the scariest whatever fuck bullshit I just said. Uh, scariest things deck has seven questions and just answering them for you guys. So the first one, I'll go ahead and start with that. My scariest real life experience. My scariest real life experience. I probably should have thought these out before I even decided to do this instead of just random fuck, let's do a vlog. Yeah, I needed to break my brains. I've been writing for a while, but anyway. Um, scariest real life experience. Um, and yes, I vape heavily if you haven't noticed yet. I used to be a smoker. Um, I'm now a year and a half without cigarettes. So that's kind of awesome. Feel much better. But anyway, uh, scary the scariest real life experience. No, I'm not stalling at all, so I can think. Hmm. Uh, I'd have to say... My scariest real... The experience I had that invoked the most fear in me... I'd have to say when I was about six or seven years old. My... Biological father. Yeah, there's an entire story behind why I call him my biological father and not my dad or my father. But my 
chronological father. When I was about seven, he hated the fact I was afraid of the dark. Like, I had to have a nightlight, some sort of light. So, I had had a bad nightmare one night, and he got fed up. So, he went into my room, took my nightlight, and took the light bulbs out of every single light in my house, or in my room, and took them out, and then grabbed me, threw me in the pitch black room, and held the door shut for about 30 minutes. When you're about seven years old and utterly terrified by the things in the dark, that's not fun. So it took me, because of, like, I screened myself hoarse from that. So, that's part of the reason why it took me a long while to actually get over that fear. Like, we were talking about, like, ten years old, which is kind of bad, but... So, yeah, I'd say that's my scariest real life. The thing that inspired the most fear and terror out of me. <clears throat> Hold on a second, my voice is getting really rough. Ugh. So, yeah. So, yeah, my biological father was the greatest person in my life. I learned a lot of things from him, uh, mainly from example what not to do and what kind of person not to be. So, yeah, but that's about as far as we're going to get to that for right now. Okay, number two, the scariest paranormal experience. My entire childhood. The house we, I grew up in, um, the house I lived in from the age of four to about 16, when I finally disowned my biological father and left there after my parents divorce that place was not a, not a nice place oh um, there was constantly things going on um well one my biological father he was not he was not a nice person to begin with but like almost immediately after we moved into that house he started getting worse he started acting much worse. All that darkness inside him started getting stronger. Then there was the figures I'd see all the time. Me and my sister, we would see shadow, a shadow figure moving around the house. Uh, I had a couple of experiences growing up where I would be in the house alone and I would see someone skulking around the house out of the corner of my eye. And tied in with that, the electronics would start going on the fritz. Lights flickering on and on, doors opening and closing on their own. Um, t the TV, um, randomly changing ta channels at rapid rate with, um, the remote batteries taken out, nothing on the knob, and even the cable box removed, and it was still flipping through the channels like just static channels, but it was flipping through the channels and then all the sun stopped. So my entire childhood was a series of paranormal, scary paranormal experiences. Part of the reason why I'm the way I am now. Okay, have I ever known anyone convicted of a violent crime? Yes. Going back to question one. My biological father, part of the reason why I disowned him. Statutory rape. That's all we're going to go into that. So yeah. Lovely. Um, number four. Am I afraid of the dark? Why or why not? Not so much anymore. Um, depends on what's going on. Where I am and what I've been doing. If it's if I'm home, I've just been goofing off, or I've been playing games, or something like that. No, not at all. Most of the time, um, if I'm out and about, depends 
on where it is. If I'm walking by, walking through old areas of like my hometown or the city I live in now, which I did say I won't say, but it's kind of hard to peg down. I live in Louisville or Louisville or Louisville, depending on where you're from. It's kind of old city. There are some places in the city that I won't walk at night. And it's not because it's a bad neighborhood. Because... Yeah. It's kind of hard to explain. I might do an entire vlog on that later on. Because it's kind of a touchy subject. Straightening the hair crap. But... I, it's kind of a touchy subject. But there's reasons why I avoid certain places. Like, I will never set foot in Waverly Hills ever again. Which, if you don't know Waverly Hills, it's like one of the most famous haunted places in not only Kentucky, but in the world. The Waverly Hills Sanatorium, the Ghost Hunters on Sci-Fi Channel, did a couple of Halloween specials here. So, I will not set foot there again. And I went there before they started doing tours, where the way you had to get in was go when the guards weren't at the gate it was a pair of bolt cutters it's like 13 at the time and i was alone with bolt cutters so yeah but yeah and i won't go there again i don't want to look emo stop it okay so that kind of answers it depends on the situation if i've been watching a lot of horror i can get a little jumpy but most of the time not because most of the time Modern horror doesn't phase me, unless it's indie stuff. Okay, so, number five. Does your hometown have any scary stories or legends? I kind of just covered that one, didn't I? Waverly Hills. But, this isn't my hometown. Um, my hometown has a couple places. Um, it was at one of the... <clears throat> Ah, the throat, what the fuck? Um, located, my hometown is in central Kentucky. Actually not that far away from where a lot of the, um, a couple battles during the Civil War occurred. Because Kentucky was one of those neutral, not really neutral, but split states. And because of that, there was a lot of death in my hometown around that time. So there's a lot of places that aren't quite comfortable. I can't remember, I honestly cannot remember the names of any of the places, but there's, I think it's the Brown Pusey House near where I grew up that is supposedly haunted and like is one of the most haunted places in my whole town. And there's all kinds of activity down there. There's the gates of hell. Every town has that place, the place where, like, there's a gateway to hell and there's a lot of, um, supernatural activity there. Went there once, got chased away by the cops. But, besides those, my hometown doesn't really, but it's got a lot of, it doesn't really have any legends or scary stories besides those two places. But there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, number six. What is my favorite urban legend? Hmm. What is my favorite urban legend? Um, hmm. Growing up, I'd have to say the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil was my favorite urban legend. Slash cryptid. I was really into the occult growing up, and all the mysterious, spooky, dark stuff. And yeah, cryptids like the Jersey Devil, Mothman, um, the Goatman, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, not so much, but all those other ones that were... All those other cryptids kind of always interested me. And honestly, lately, the El Chupacabra. Because it's not really well known, but there's evidence that's starting to pop up in the United States 
because in the United States they're having cases that mirror the chupacabra attacks and in the areas where these attacks are actually being logged in the United States like all over the Midwest there's a new species of canine that's starting to pop up that no one's seen before and some and of course Midwest United States everyone got, has a gun so it's like, oh, that thing might be attacking my livestock. Shoot it. That's not a dog. That's not a wolf. That's not a coyote. That's something else. What the fuck? And people have been studying and the physiology is a little different. So the chupacabra has become interested, interesting to me because the fact we may be finally getting to the point of proving it real and what the real chupacabra is. Which, from the evidence that I've seen in my own research, I'm feeling it's a species of mutated canine that it diet, its diet is more like a vampire bat than your normal canine. Which would explain the reason why they're all drinking blood. Because if you have a dog, a medium-sized dog that consists prim prim primarily on blood, English, then it's going to drink a lot of blood. And that's going to be livestock size to feed them. So that's kind of interesting to me, but growing up, it was always like, it was always the Jersey Devil for some reason. That legend always stuck with me. Okay, and number seven, my scariest nightmare. Yeah, quite a few. I, growing up, after about the age of six, um, I started having night terrors. My memory's not that great, so they fade just like most of my memories have, especially around those times, but I do remember a couple growing up. Oh, um, hmm, that's a hard one to choose from. Um, let's see, there was the zombie apocalypse night terror, where it ended with me being torn apart and me waking up, scream, trying to scream at the top of my lungs, but I couldn't scream. And I could not move for an hour because I hurt so bad. From the phantom pains of the night terror. Um, there's that one, but... Yeah, that was just a horrible, horrible end to it. Um, there was one, it was weird, growing up when I was a little kid. Um, it was, there's an old Mickey Mouse cartoon, actually, where it's like black and white Mickey Mouse. Where's Mickey Mouse on a train? Right, doing stuff, and I don't even remember the cartoon, it's like Billy's really doing something, and it's standard, like, old, original Mickey Mouse. But, for some reason, that stuck with me in a series of dreams that I had. What it was, was, it was me, as a kid, on a sm the small train, where it was just the engine and the, the caboose, and there was something chasing the train, something I couldn't see, but I could hear it, I knew it was big, horrible, and nasty, and I'd never opened the back door of that caboose to see what it was, but I could hear it getting closer. And it would get to a certain point, then I'd wake up. The thing is, the dreams would continue. Like, the next night, I'd have that exact same dream, and the monster would start out closer, and closer, and closer, for about a week. Until the point where I was so afraid to go to sleep because of that, that I snuck, um drink a bunch of my parents sodas and like pretty much got in the corner and decided I'm going to stay awake the entire night. After that night I didn't have it that night of like trying to stay awake the entire night, which I did, then slept through the day. I didn't have that nightmare again. Which is a little weird, but my life filled with weird things. So yeah, that's the um that's all of the scariest things tag. So yeah, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna start doing vlogs a lot more. Kind of connect with you guys and let you see who I really am. <laughs> who is not emo, even though his hair wants to be emo. <sighs> anyway. But yeah, I want to kind of connect with you guys a little bit more and do more stuff where it's just me talking. I know that sounds weird. I'm, my brain is fried, as I said. I've been working on research for the last couple of days and it got to the point where last night my ears felt like they were oozing, my brains felt like they were oozing out of my ears. So yeah. So yeah, I'm going to start doing these vlogs more. I may do one a week. Uh, you might be getting two a week, depending on when I want to upload this. Because I'm recording this on... Technically Saturday. This might go up Saturday. English. This might go up Saturday. Not 100% sure. I might put it wait to save it till Monday. But yeah, um, I'm going to do. I'm going to think about doing a vlog every week, depending on what you guys think about this one. And um, I'll start. I'll be doing in the minds of madness, probably a vlog every week, and then probably some other random stuff that doesn't take a lot of work to do. Cause you know, I keep looking up because I have. Uh, dry erase board calendar setting behind my monitor that I got today or yesterday, today, six o'clock in the morning. I got it on Friday. But I got that and worked up my entire work schedule for In the Minds of Madness. So, caps I have in that, I'll be working on other content. But for the rest of this month, until I get my um, editing skills a little bit better with the format and that sort of thing. I probably won't be doing too much other than In the Minds of Madness and Random Vlogs. I may do quick and dirty Let's Plays, like one-off Let's Plays, but I won't be doing them seriously. Which, that's another thing. As you can see, behind me, there's a lot of stuff. This is our office, which, until I moved, moved in and set up my computer, was a storage room, and I haven't gotten around to cleaning it all out yet. So, um, video format might be a little bit different. When I get a break from the schedule, a lot of this is hopefully going to disappear, and I may be hanging something behind me. So you don't see all this random stuff behind me. But we'll see how that goes. Lighting, I gotta work with lighting because I've been going with Let's Plays. Um, not going to be doing as many Let's Plays anymore, so going to be mainly doing informative videos. So setups probably going to alter a little bit, but it's all for the good. So yeah, um, I will stop rambling now and let you all. Get on with whatever you are doing, and stop being emo hair. Seriously, if it keeps on doing this, it's gonna cut itself. Oh, that was bad. That was bad, I'm sorry. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.